Welcome to this video. My name is Marie, the Automation Junkie. Through this training series on Sweet Dash, I'll take you from an amateur to an expert level. Let's get started. All right, so welcome. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is going to be the platform branding. So platform branding is normally where we start inside of a setup. The reason why I start with platform branding is because this is going to give the entire platform the look, the visuals, I like doing it this way so that people can um, just see their branding before they start to, and replaces the Sweet Dash branding. Um, as you can see, it's already kind of taken over here with my colors. When you're first inside of Sweet Dash, one of the things you'll see is everything says Sweet Dash, everything from the custom URL down to the logos and all of the colors. So to start to change that, it would be by going to platform branding. Normally you can come in and it's already there, but if it's not, you'll go to this menu item here. You're gonna see this, your branding menu, and this is where we're focusing. So you're gonna start with platform branding. At the top, you're gonna see logo and present um, preset themes. The preset themes are just gonna change the overall cover. So you have like these pretty colors. I like this color, actually. It changes the preset, so it changes all of the additional colors down here for the platform. Um, but for the most part, you can customize it if you choose to. I'm going to go down in order so you can understand what each of them mean. So there's an option in here for force dark mode. Dark mode is a um, an actual a theme that can be initiated via um, this nice, dark mode trigger or toggle here. I don't use dark mode, but it is really cool when it's in dark mode. It's kind of like an invert type of vibe. Um, you also will have this section where you have the this dashboard logo. So the dashboard logo is going to be presented up here. So the dashboard logo is the first thing that people will see at the top left. So that's where you will change this. You can also copy this over, and I like to do this drag and drop bit because it's the easiest thing. Um, and this is gonna all affect dark mode because sometimes you wanna do it in dark mode as well, but you may wanna change it to be a different logo. So they gave you that option to do dark mode in a different color. Then you have the mobile friendly logo. The mobile friendly logo, a lot of people are not gonna understand what this is because not at this time does Sweet Dash have a um, app, but they do have a like a collapse feel that kind of presents you with a mobile friendly logo. Um, so this is where that will initiate there. And again, I just copy and pull it over. Um, the beautiful thing is that Sweet Dash also has these font themes that are using Google Fonts. So the library is going to come specifically from Google Fonts. And if you don't see one in here, maybe ask them about it. But I think they have pretty much all of them because you can even filter it and see all of the fonts here. Please just take a minute to look for your actual font and see exactly, you know, what you like. I like to do this by clicking this button and then testing them out to see which one I really like. I don't think that did any much of anything. Let's try. Okay. So for the most part, you can also change the font weight. The font weights are very varied to the actual style font itself. So if you have any font size that you like, you can adjust that there. So you can make this font family 700 or you can make it 400. Those are the two options. You can also change the font style in itself, but sometimes there's only normal or if you have italics or things like that, you can do that there. The secondary header font can be changed as well. And that also can be utilized in different areas of the platform. You can see that that adjusted here because it's not the primary headers, it's actually the secondary headers. So I can make those adjustments as I like. Um, please just think through the process when you're doing this because even though it's changing here and it might be um, visual for you here, it may not be in other places. So you can change the font weight if they have a different weight and you can change the font style. Same thing for general text. It does the same thing as well, where you are able to change those, and you can see that it adjusts these styles here as well. I like to pretty much use the same throughout, unless I'm being very um, unique and I want to use different ones. I like to use pop-ins, but I can use anything that I choose to um, kind of give some more variety, and then I can also change the weight per the style. So if I wanted to make the headers a little bit darker, I can do that here. 
Moving down to the platform colors, as I mentioned up top, the platform colors are specific to the entire platform. So the primary color would be the primary color that is displayed everywhere. And then you have the text color, which will be literally just changed. Oh, I don't know why that happened, but changed based on, um, I think it's a, a button, but changed based on the, the actual type of color that you want. I like to make it unique to my platform. So I'll adjust it the way I want. And then you can also change the icon color to whatever color you want. You can see at the left that it changed. Let's just keep in mind that it also um, should just match within your color scheme. You also have the ability to change the loading line that's on the animation. I have not personally used this because I don't need it, but you can make it whatever color you want. If you first say wanted to just go back to default, you can always press this reset button and it takes you back to the, the default colors that are there that uh, that just match the um, the actual theme that you chose up here, okay? The other thing down here is gonna be the advanced platform colors. This is gonna be specific to the sidebar. So anything that you change here, you can make the sidebar colors darker. You can change the percentage here to say, I want it to be 80% darker. I can make it lighter and make this whatever percentage of lighter. Um, or you can choose a custom color in itself. So if I wanted to choose red or white, I can do that just because it would all be custom to that sidebar. Same thing here with this. This is just the avatar background. So this is indicating this here. I can make this whatever color I choose um, just so that it can tie out to my colors as well. And then the menu background as well, you can choose this to be darker, you can make it lighter, or you can have it custom, um, and that changes that sidebar there. So those are the basic knowledge that's there. You can also disable this, which will just keep the platform in one distinct color. So you won't have like a hover color or anything like that. But when you change it, you have the hover color that is associated with the sidebar avatar here. Um, right now, it looks all crazy, so I'm going to choose colors that make a little bit more sense. Um, but you can have those kind of flexibilities and adjustments as you need. You have the background color controls as well here. I like to use this if I'm going to just use a color for my background. I don't use colors. I use the background um, platform itself, color, like a background itself, like a wallpaper. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to disable this and I'm going to go further down so you can understand what I meant. The UI UX elements, it kind of creates a more modern view when you have it on. If it's off, it gives you more of those square buttons, but when it's on, it gives you more like a luxury type of vibe. I always like to have it on so that it's um, just giving more rounded avatars and, round, uh, and borders. This is where I mentioned the background um, for the platform itself. So if I were to choose any random image, and I don't even know if I have a good random image in here, let's use this one. If I were to choose a background image, it would change the entire background image to this image that is used here. Again, you have the options to change that as well inside of the dark mode. So you can replace it, you can make it different, you could do all the things to make it custom. The other great thing is that you can now change the titles to customize it to the actual fitting presentation that you want. And then there's this, this text color that you wanna change, which is the blocks, the text inside of here. But then you can also change the shadow. So if you wanted the shadow to look a little bit darker, you can change the transparency. If you want it to be more gold or whatever the case is, um, I'm going to actually pick this color and utilize that and then make it a little bit darker um, or lighter rather. So you can see that showing up there. Um, so it kind of gives more of an effect there um, on that end. Then you also have the account cus confirmation customer logo. So this is going to be the logo that is used on the actual confirmation when they're signing up for their account. So this is what it kind of looks like. It's defaulted to the sweet dash one right now. I like, again, the drag and drop features. So I'm going to, I have like this drop zone tool that I use so that I can easily drag and drop things down. Um, and then I'm going to move that and change it over here. So now it's going to replace that background and use it here. You can also update the background itself um, if you wanted to. And then you can also change the colors 
itself if you wanted to. So we're coming down towards the end. And so here you have the actual loading screen. So the loading screen can also be customized to a degree. You have the ability to change the color. You can change the background color. You can change how the animation shows. You can change the logo size if you're choosing to upload your own logo or loader. And you can also change those loader animations if you wanted to just use one that's already embedded inside of Sweet Dash. Um, it also does these image animations. So if you're using an image, you can use them to your, uh, you know, I like this one. You can see how it works. I also like now the transparency type of vibe where I don't have to be completely blocked out. I can see what's on the screen on behind me and it just slides up. If I wanted to change it to where it fades, I can also do that. So instead of it now fade, um, sliding up, it will just fade away. So that's what that does. The custom, CC, the custom CSS is a space that is really meant for coders. If you don't know coding, I would say to just leave it alone. If you do and you have some coding that you want to use for different UI or any different abilities that coding can do, you can take a deeper dive there. There's going to be another video on that. So we'll talk through that a little bit more later. And then you have the white labeling. So we all know white labeling is specific to the customization of the platform. So if you take the second to just hover over this little um, question mark, it'll tell you what it will do. The white labeling just really means that the super admin will have access to this. So um, if you don't have it toggled off, that means the admin will have access to it. Um, however, if you just have it toggled on, only the super admin will have access to it, okay? You can hide also the secure API options, which will restrict it from any admin. You can hide the, the super ID, I'm sorry, the super admin within the platform itself. This scenario is only if you guys are going to be um, creating a platform for someone else on someone else's behalf and you are the super admin. Um, you don't want to be seen because you're not a part of their company or whatever the case is, you would hide that there. And then the ask button is normally at the bottom. I've hidden mine already, but it's normally at this bottom here, this left, um, and that's what you can hide. It's really accessible to the internal, so the admin or the super admin role. Then you have the um, template library, which will give you the ability to disable or enable this template library here. I say leave it open, um, but if you want to hide it, you can. And then you have the last thing, which is the Sweet Dash Academy. Sweet Dash Academy is really just going to be, um, you want to specify. Moving on, we're going to go to the email branding. So the email branding is going to be a different space as well, where you're going to be customizing it based on your company. So for this, you're going to take the time to connect your actual email sending method. First thing you want to do is make sure that your company is um actually lined up the way that you want it to be. So Golden and Tech Savvy is this company's name and the company name to insert on the subject line will also be the same unless you want to change it because these are also customizable. I normally like using um, two methods when connecting my email. I like to use the domain verified sender. This is just another security step where I know that my domain is going to be sent because it's verified. So it just kind of gives you more of that uh, security and um, the deliverability for when you're sending emails. And then I also connect my account, if it's Gmail or if it's gonna be Microsoft. Those are the two places that I always do. One of the key things to note is that when you add your domain, you're also going to make sure that you activate the transactional emails because this is going to be where you're able to receive those transactional emails directly to that email address. Same thing with when you're doing it for the Gmail or the Microsoft, you're going to do the same thing and then activate those two options for transactional and marketing emails as well. Down at the bottom here, you're going to have the ability to change the logo. You can make your logo a, a submark. You can make it the actual logo. This is going to go inside of the email itself. You can also change the logo positioning to being left, right, center, or hitting. Um, I like it to be either left or center, depending on how your style is. The greatest thing as well is you can change the main background because sometimes you don't want it to be the plain Jane white. You want it to actually be um, a different branding color. You could do that and separate the footer with a different color if you chose to do that. You have the option to add everything, including Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok links. Those links are all customizable. So you're able to add your links separately in here, which is fantastic. It will all be added into the um the footer as an icon. So it does not show up as a link. It shows up as an icon. And last but not least, you have the copyright text. The copyright text can be added as just a regular, what you see here is what you get. So you're able to add, um, I wouldn't add images or anything like that, but I would update this this is a, um, a, a dynamic field, which it updates the current year every year. This is your company name that's defaulted, so you can change this to whatever you like. People have the all rights reserved um, type of you know thing here. You can change it if you choose to. Another thing that I see people do is also add their URL here. So they add their link to add that. And that kind of concludes where... Thanks for watching. If you would like to see the rest of this video, check the link in the description below.